All right, how are you guys today? You, what, what's that? Nothing. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, my name is Brandy, and I am the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy, and we are live here on the Redesign with Prima Facebook page and also over on their YouTube channel. And today has been an exciting day. It's always a fun day when we have new releases. So this is a new release day. I've seen some really beautiful collections come up. There's a ton of new papers. There's a whole uh, cowboy vibe going on here. So I've got my denim overalls on and my denim apron. And I even brought my cowboy hat. <laughs> this belongs to my son though. And I'm, um, I'm California cowboy, so I wear mine with flip flops. Nice. Yeah. Howdy. All right, you guys, so I'm here because I get to show you guys the new pastel artistry collection from Redesign with Prima. So let's take a look at this new collection. Um, the first um, the first item in this collection is going to be a decoupage paper. And this one's really pretty. Um, it's kind of got the look of a, of a stone wall. I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm not really a hat person, so I think we'll have to save the hat for later. And I'll show you guys what this... Uh, paper looks like up against my backdrop here. Um, de the decoupage papers from Redesign with Prima look great up against a white backdrop because it really makes the colors pop. So this looks like a, a stone wall and what I like about this paper is it's one that can be used either horizontally but it can also be used vertically too like this. Um, and that's a really nice feature because it makes it really or versatile for the projects that you can use it on. Um, do you want to, can you, uh, I'll bring this in close to you guys, actually. It's easier, easier for me to move and for the cameras to move. But can you guys see that it looks like a stone wall and it's got some greenery growing in between the stones? So that is the decoupage paper. And these collections are made so that you can use the um, pieces of the collection together on your project. So you can combine them in a bunch of different ways. Um, and I'm going to use these today. I have two projects we're going to work on today. Um, so next in this collection is a MIDI transfer, and um, the Redesign with Primo transfers come in several sizes, and this is sort of a, this is a, the smallest size that I'm going to show you guys today, but let me show you what's in this. So this is what it looks like when it's in the package, and this transfer has three sheets to it, so I'm going to show you all three of these sheets. Okay, so this is the first sheet here, has kind of a cluster of florals on there. And these are really like um, watercolor looking hand-drawn florals. Very pretty, a lot of greens, soft pinks and yellows in there. This is the second sheet is another cluster. And I kind of like these two because they can be used um, together. They're kind of um, you know opposing designs where you could put them on separate sides of a project and they would complement each other. So those are two of the sheets, and this has more smaller pieces, but these are great because then you can use this to fill, fill in. So if you, I usually start with the largest pieces when I'm, I'm doing a transfer design, I'll start with the larger pieces, and then I fill in with these smaller pieces to make it really look customized. And so this would be your smaller pieces, some white and yellow and pink florals, really pretty greens. There's some sagey greens in there, some kind of yellowy greens too. So you can go any, any number of ways with your greens. So this is the MIDI transfer called Pastel Artistry. All of these things that we're showing today, you guys, are already available at your Redesign with Prima retailer. So check with your retailer if you're looking for anything that we're showing you guys today, because all of these new collections are currently available. All right, we have a mold with this one, and I, you guys know I love my molds. This one is adorable. So this is what it looks like in the package. It's called Buzzing Beauties. Any guesses what this might have in it? It's insect. So this is the Buzzing Beauties mold. I'm going to come up close so you guys can really see the design on there. All right, so this one has in it um, ladybugs, um, beetles, moths some bumblebees. So I kind of picture that this, some of these bumblebees could be fluttering around inside of your florals would be really cute. Just add a, you know, one or two little bumblebees and um, being in a mold, you can get some dimensional effects. So I could have the flat transfer and then a little bit of raised design with the, um, with the, the buzzing beauties, um, mold would be super cute. You could add some color to these using the redesign with Prima Mica powder, some yellows and blacks and whites inside of the 
uh, the bumblebees are red and black inside the, the ladybugs. Just a really cute mold. So that's the Buzzing Beauties mold as part of this collection. And then we have another transfer. This is a um, this is the maxi transfer, yeah. So this is a maxi transfer which has two sheets that are 12 by 12. And this design is really pretty because this is actually a little bit more buildable of a design. Um, and I like the, the buildable design because it means you can really customize it to whatever you're putting it on. And I have some projects I'm going to show you these on today. So this is two 12 by 12 sheets. I'll show you this first one first. That's the first sheet in that package. So I've got the soft pinks, yellows, greens, whites, and you can see how they, they just look really kind of hand drawn, really loose and free flowing design. Very organic looking. And this is the second sheet in that collection. So two sheets in that one package. That's the maxi transfer for pastel artistry. And we have, of course, a large transfer as well. So let me show you this one in the package. This is the largest transfer in this collection. This one measures 24 by 35. And this has two sheets in it. So I'm going to pull this out and we'll unroll these. So these would be, this would be your largest size. This is for your full size um, projects that you're doing. So I do a lot of furniture. So in my case, this would be a full size dresser that I would use this size of transfer on. So two pieces in here. That's the first one. Is it easier if I show them vertically? You're good like that. Horizontally it doesn't matter. You're okay. 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 So and you can, can you see the whole thing in the picture? This one, yeah, obviously. Like, yeah, because like, you, YouTube gets all up in it. <laughs> there we all go. Right. And then the second sheet in this, let me pull these apart and try to not let them roll up on each other. Oh, man. Yeah, before I even I'm get I'm stressing to the, just looking at this. Ooh, makes me nervous, too. So you always want to make sure that your transfers stay attached to their backing sheet until you're ready to apply it to your project because it can stick to itself. Um, but really, really pretty. There's even some, some light purples in here. And let's see, how do these attach together? I guess they go Hopefully like Hopefully not. This. Yeah, not literally together. But these are, it's a, just a very like whimsy design. Just feels very light. It feels like a watercolor. Feels like a watercolor painting. Um, the redesign transfers also have these colors up here in the corner. Uh, this is called Hue Harmony, and it sh it shows you the colors that are in the transfer, so you can pull your color inspiration from your transfers for whatever project you're working on. Whew, that made me nervous. Oh, the, the Hue Harmony are transferable, too, so I keep saying this, but I want to save them and use them in a, in like a little swatch book. Okay, I made it through that without sticking my transfer to itself at all. But you're not done yet. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so we are going to work on some projects with this pastel artistry collection. Let me show you guys what I um, have done so far, and then we'll work on one together. Okay, so I chose to use the MIDI transfer, which was the smallest size I showed you guys today, and I put it on here. Um, this is a really cute little jewelry box. Um, this was painted in Wise Owl paint. Um, the colors I used were called Blush and Native Clay, so it's got a sort of a um it's, it's shades of pink and i put it up here onto the top also and it flips underneath the lid say hi to sean Sean's <laughs> you're the roller i just saw the look of terror on his face and he realized he's in the mirror <laughs> and it wraps onto the side so i'm actually going to use more of this transfer today on this little project and for this one, I actually chose um, sort of a purpley backdrop. So for this one, I have I have it on against the pinks. I'll leave this up here on the top. And I'm going to apply it onto a purpley backdrop so you can kind of get an idea for what this transfer looks like up against um, different color backdrops. And also um, that I'm, uh, I'm using the one in the same transfer. So I'm going to get multiple projects out of the same transfer. So these are this is the remainder of this transfer. I use the first sheet on here. Oh, Sharon, don't worry. There's no showing of my cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah. Although Sean would look better in a cowboy hat than I do. I actually stole this from my son's room. And if he sees that I get makeup onto the lip oh, of this hat, you're gonna, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's going to flip on me. If he sees that I even have this out of his room. 
Oh, here, so, hold on. I'm going to screenshot this and send it to him. But he's at school and what he doesn't know won't <laughs> hurt him. Okay? All right, so I'm going to take this sheet here, and I start out with my transfers by kind of dry fitting them to my project. Yes, Sharon, just stirrups and boots did it. Chaps. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mental images are hor <laughs> horrifying. Horrifying. Let's, Quick pull away. Let's stick with overall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make some extra money. Um, so I usually will dry fit my transfer. And I like to try to preserve as much of the design as possible. So if I dry fit it like this, I know that I'm going to have to cut off the bottom section of this. So I actually try to preserve as much of the transfer as possible. So I can move this around as many different ways as I like until I feel like I've got kind of a, a design that I like. I think I like like this. And then what I'm looking at is I've got, see this little swag that uh, flows down onto the leg right here. And I like that. I think that looks really cute. And then this piece will kind of extend out onto the front of my furniture piece. So that's how I'm going to apply this. So once I've got my layout kind of decided, then I'm going to commit. And I remove it from the backing sheet. All right. And I'm going to try to find as close to that placement as possible. All right. And now this is what I have to go with. So I'm going to start on this leg first and I'm going to kind of rub it onto this leg and I'm going to wrap the corner of this, this furniture piece. This is just a small little side table and this is painted in Wise Owl paint. The two colors I used are Thunderstruck and Ivory. Oh, this is really, uh, thank you. I was really just going to ask you, you're, you're kind of blocking. Yeah, sorry. I tried guys. I tried, but I'm not a cowboy hat girl. Not a hat girl, period. I see photos of myself in hats and I'm like, what in the world is going on? All right, I'm gonna give this a little slice and the reason is because it wants to fold up under this um, lip. And so just by slicing the rigidity of that clear backing sheet gives me a little bit of play. And I'm gonna work this section right here. I'm gonna end up making some cuts in this design. I'm gonna get all in your business. Yeah, you always do. Yeah. Oh, you should turn it some more. And yes. I'm, and I'm going to wrap it around this corner. To do that, I'm just going to press it down with my hand. And I'm just, this transfer tool comes in the package with the transfer. Okay, and then I need to go down this piece of molding. So I'm going to wrap it again with my fingers and press it into place just using my fingernails. And then I go over the entirety of the transfer one time. Once I've gone over it, I can come and find a piece of this clear backing sheet and I'll start pulling it away and I'm rubbing as I go. But I'm also making sure that the transfer is releasing onto the background. If it doesn't, it means I need to rub it again. Okay, and so that has popped away. And now I'm gonna go over, and the first thing I do is I wanna press it down just using my fingers. And this just sort of seats that transfer into place, but you can see how I was able to wrap the side. Sorry, that sound. And then I'll come do the same thing on the front of this. <laughs> Shit. Pieces of that would look good on your nail color. Yeah, well I kinda of went with a brown because my nails are short right now, so I go with dark colors when my nails are short. And I kind of want to hide them. If my nails are short, it's, it means I've been working a lot this week. Paint, painting and keeping your nails long is a labor of love. I try. Okay, and now I'm getting close to where I've got this section uh, ready to remove. And I'm ready to move on to kind of the front of this furniture piece. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cut to this. And the reason is because I have a slice here where my drawer, where my drawer edge is. So I want to cut this so that my, or my transfer is able to open along with my drawer sides. Okay, and now I'm going to finish rubbing this on. When I get to the corner where it kind of wraps the side of my drawer edges, I'm just going to kind of bend my transfer tool into that the edge of those drawer edges. So it kind of wraps this, the frame right here, this leg that I've got. It'll kind of wrap that and then I'm ready to move on to my next piece. Um, I'm gonna end up with a few cuts in this and my next one I'm gonna cut around these drawer boxes. 
Okay, that's one of my drawer boxes. And it probably will make you a little bit nervous to cut your transfers, but I promise you. Well, it's just making me a little nervous yeah, watching you. It will be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this centerpiece right here that's going to go inside this molding. This is a curved molding right here, so it's a little bit more challenging of a piece to wrap that transfer onto. So I'm going to go down in the recess and do the flat portion first, and then I'm going to wrap these curves just one at a time. And I just use my finger to press it down into that curve. And then I'm going to come down here and same thing. I'm going to use my fingernails. Oh, well, hey, Sherry. Uh, from work. Yeah, There's certain jobs that, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, hopefully not probably with, shouldn't. Not with a patient. All right. So, I mean, it probably looked more complex than it is, but I was able to get that to wrap, wrap around that drawer molding. Let's go ahead and cut this and I'll make it independent of the body. Cut this one too. Try to not cut, slice my hand off with my razor knife. Oh jeez. That will happen on camera eventually. Oh my gosh. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this out of the body. Cheyenne says she hopes to be as good as you as applying transfers one day oh, on curves. Thank you. There is an art to applying transfers. There is an art to it, both in designing your layout and then to actually putting the application on. It takes time. I think you should do that away from the camera. Can you come down here and see what I'm doing? I'm doing that right now. You're see how okay. I can get this. I, I can put it back in here in the body, I guess. Oh, just, okay. now that just I, for Sean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now that I already adjusted, you're fine. I, but I would normally do that. I would end up cutting my pieces to where I've got independent pieces and I'll start taking the drawers out because it can be easier to apply it down um, on a level floor than it is to try to apply this on the body of the piece. Once I've got those pieces cut away from each other, I don't need to keep it in the body of the piece anymore. It's just so I can kind of determine the layout so it's consistent. All right, so I'm gonna to try to kind of work left-handed here. And I'm rubbing my transfer and pulling away that clear backing sheet as I go. Just kind of going up and down the transfer, making sure that it's all staying with my piece. Once I get to this edge where it's ready to release, kind of use my finger and I guide the transfer off of the backing sheet. That's a really nice application. And then I just press it into place using my fingers. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And here I would use the Redesign with Prima polishing pad to just smooth that out. Okay, so that one's on. And now I can reach up under here and get this top drawer to come out, pop out a little bit. Oh, my, one of my cuts is stuck. Where are we stuck? Right here. So that just means I didn't cut it all the way through the backing sheet. Finish that slice and I can pull this out. Okay, and um, I'm gonna cut this top portion off. I will come up and do the uh, underneath this lip, but you guys won't really be able to see that on camera very well. So for now, I'll just cut it off and I save, I'll save that. And I turned it up. Um, I didn't put the backside down onto the top so that it doesn't want to stick to my dresser top while it's waiting. Just want to be careful with any of those portions up here. I'm going to wrap this top lip. I like to have a little bit of my transfer that wraps over just so you don't see inside of those drawer gaps that it's missing anything. The expert at her finest. Yes. I mean, you think it's not very interesting to watch a transfer go on, but there really is a lot of technique that goes into it and different ways that you can apply them. This one has moldings on it, which is a more complex application. I look for pieces, and especially if you're just starting out, flat surfaces are always going to be the easiest. Okay, and then I'm to the end of this one. I want to kind of guide it off that clear backing sheet, make sure none of it wants to pull away and then rubbing it with my fingers to get it nice and smooth. Give, I give it a lot of pressure too. All 
All right, and then I've got little holes here where my hardware will sit. I could just poke those out. Uh, I would normally use a screwdriver. I don't have one out here with me. You can just use a screwdriver and my hardware will poke right into those holes. But here's what you do have. Number two. Oh yeah. So uh, it just pokes right through that transfer and then my hardware will, will go in those holes. I will seal this transfer. This is, I'm applying this on raw paint right now. So my paint is unsealed. And the redesign transfer is just like a little bit of that bite that you get with this. Uh, this is a chalky style paint. So it's got a little bit of bite to it. And then this is that molding piece that I already applied and I just peeled that backing away. And I'm gonna, again, use my fingers. I'm gonna slice it right here at the edge because it's got some tension on it where the transfer is going down into that crevice. And I'd rather slice it and give it the place that I want it to tear rather than letting it tear from the tension. Okay, and then I will pull these drawers out and I like to um, also, since I just released this section right here, and make sure that anywhere that it's wrapped, it wraps up underneath. Anywhere that I've got tension, I just give it a little slice to release that tension. Pull these drawers out and wrap this around this edge too. And then I'll have Sean get in nice and close. I'm gonna slice this a little bit better. So the tools I have out is I usually have out scissors, a sharp razor knife, a dull one, I don't know, just makes your day a lot harder. But how pretty is that? It just added like a little soft, little feminine touch to the side table. And then I've got these pieces here. This I will match up and this will go down onto this bottom lip. And then this will come up under this top lip and I will lose a I'll, I'll lose just a little leaf, but I could even take that and just, you know, add a little leaf swag coming off of here. I usually never waste a piece of a transfer. I end up using the entire thing. Sometimes I just challenge myself to, to make sure that I use it all. Like on this one, I'll end up having this one last sheet and I might just apply a little, a little flower down here, something like that would be really cute. And then I don't know, these could maybe wrap the side or something like that, but I will, I, or I could get a third piece out of it. I could do another jewelry box, which would be three projects that I get out of one midi size transfer, which is pretty impressive. So this is a great size for this furniture piece, also perfect for the jewelry box, but I love having the, the versatility of the different sizes of the transfers. Let's me do all these different size projects. Press this down, I've got a little piece of molding right here and I'm just slicing it with my razor knife and pressing it in there. So it wraps those moldings right there. So how cute is that, you guys? And I've got some really cute hardware. Um, I'll add my clear coat over the top and this piece will be done. You guys wanna go come work on another project? Let me check my time. All right, we've got time for another project. So, I hope I can show this because I don't think this collection has been on camera yet, but I'm gonna show you guys another project that I'm working on. It's got a country Western theme and I'm using one of the new paper packs from Redesign. This one's called Ranch Roamers. So I'm sorry if this is, this is a spoiler, I think. It's a spoiler. All right, so this is a three paper pack and one of the, the first papers in the pack is a deer skin print, which is really cute, right? I see so much stuff flooding my uh, my newsfeed. Uh, deer skin. A lot of people are putting in deer skin print carpet. Have you guys seen that carpet? Huh? It's actually really cute. <coughs> uh, it has a pattern in it, so it kind of would camouflage dirt and stuff. All right, and this is the second one. This is a steer head. It's got a skull, a deer skull on it. And then the background is sort of a, it looks like maybe a snake print, like a really um, fine zoomed in snake print. But the third one in this pack is the one that I chose to use, and I think it's going to be the most popular. It's going to be this cowhide. Isn't this cute? Okay, so I am using this on this project here. This is probably a 1950s desk, and I chose to do it with sort of a barn wood finish. This will all be on camera on my YouTube channel, so you guys subscribe to Brush by Brandy on YouTube. And I will have a full tutorial, including how I'm getting this barnwood look 
um, around the frame of this, but we're gonna go ahead and add my paper to this third drawer here. Can you grab me a brush? I forgot a brush. What? Any brush. Uh, preferably not one of my Klingon, something smaller. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to apply my paper to this top drawer here. Um, no. Smaller? Smaller? Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. Sorry, I forgot a paintbrush. Okay, so I'm going to put, apply my paper to this last drawer, and what I'm going to use for this is my Redesign with Prima Decoupage Gel. This is the matte formula. It also comes in a gloss. And I've, I have already sort of dry fit my paper where I want it to be. Now on this design here, I had to be cautious of how I cut this. So I had to sort of dry fit it. Um, this is how my paper would have fit together originally. But what I needed to make sure of was that I left a piece long enough that it would fit across this drawer. And if I cut it side to side like this, I ended up short for this top drawer. So I actually had to cut these from a vertical section. So just dry fit your paper and make sure you get your placement before you make your cuts. And so now I've got this piece that's long enough to fit across this top drawer. Is that the quick PSA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> All right, and so then I'm just gonna apply my decoupage gel. Um, I did paint a white, uh, I painted this with primer and I went ahead and put a white uh, coat of paint over underneath. Um, this is actually Wiesel paint and ivory. There you go. Sorry, I'm rolling over the, my transfers that I have on the... And I apply like a pretty ample coat of the decoupage gel. And I like to use the decoupage gel with the redesign um, decoupage papers because it's a little bit thicker formula and these are thicker papers. So it gives a really good bond. I know that because I've also had to remove this stuff. <laughs> um, but I like to give it a nice... <clears throat> A nice pretty ample bed of the the deck pot gel this is going to serve as my um, adhesive but it's also going to be my sealer on this one so once i've got a nice bed of that decoupage gel i can place my paper and how i'm going to do that is i'm going to find my 90 degree corner over here and i've got my factory 90 degree edge on the paper so that's the easiest part to match up okay and then i can go ahead and pull this across with a nice straight line across the top of my drawer edge. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my same razor knife that I was using on my other project and I'm gonna cut this. And I'm gonna save this scrap because it's a pretty good sized scrap and I'll use this on another project. So I get multiple projects out of all of my stuff. I don't throw anything away. Okay, this is why you want a nice sharp razor knife so that I could just ride that edge completely. And then once I've got this pressed into place, Ugh, I would use my redesign scraper tool, which I don't have out, so I'm gonna use my fingers in this case, and I'm gonna push it into that bed of the deck podge gel until I can feel it coming through the paper. That's usually why I would use the scraper tool. I think it's actually on, on my sink, but it's fine because I, I already did it with my hands. I wanna feel it coming through that paper. Usually the scraper tool will just run through that and press it into place, make sure you have no bubbles. And then I'm going to apply another coat of that decoupage gel over the top. And I actually like to work this decoupage gel. I want to see it going in, fully saturating that paper. Um, the paper has a, these papers have a light texture to them. And I want it to saturate and go through to that decoupage gel that's underneath until they, they marry together and sort of encapsulate my paper. That gives me a nice firm bond to hold this in place. Um, I, I try not to brush super, you know, messy brush strokes all over the place, but I do want to make sure that I work it into that paper. Try to keep them kind of going in the same direction. There are some fibers in this paper and I don't want to disrupt them a whole bunch. So if I need to get it to saturate in a place, I can brush the same direction and just uh, brush over it a few times. We'll get it through that paper to where it matches up with the jet podge gel underneath, and then I just clean up those brush strokes. What direction? One direction. Sean's favorite band. I just splattered some of my jet podge oh gel. Oh my gosh. Okay, once this is dry, and I prefer to do it once my paper is dry because then it is nice and held in place. And the paper also sort of firms up a little bit from that decoupage gel. I will take a, a heavy grit sanding sponge. 
Um, I also find if I do this once the decoupage gel is dry, it keeps those fibers from fraying as much because now they've got the decoupage gel, uh, it sort of seals the edge of the paper. Does that make sense? It kind of holds those fibers in place so I don't get fraying on the edges. So once this is dry, I will take a firm grit sanding sponge. This is an 80 grit and I will go along my edges and I'll pull, I pull one direction. I'm not using a sawing motion, but I'll just pull in one direction and it will give me a really nice clean edge. It's pretty clean from the razor knife, but this just gets it precisely fitted to my drawer. Yes, Sharon, just pet the cow lightly. Yeah, just pet, yeah. Like over here. All right, and then to finish these off, what I will do, so these are already dry over here on this side. Let's pull these out a little bit. And then you actually, you're going to bust it. I'm going to break my pencil. Yeah. I don't want to hear about that one. So I will take a super fine grit sanding sponge. These have already dried. So same process I did over here, only this one's completely dry. And this is a super fine grit sanding sponge. And I just lightly go over the top, which softens. Go ahead and go around all those edges. And then I'll apply one last coat of my decoupage gel. This could also be your clear coat sealer. So I like to use the decoupage gel to apply my paper, but say I wanted my sheen on this paper to match my entire furniture piece, this is the step I would do that in. I would seal it in. After that first coat of decoupage gel is already dry, I can come back and I can apply my furniture sealer that I wanna use on my entire piece and get a uniform sheen. And that would be my final um, sealer on this, this piece. So I end up doing one coat underneath as my adhesive and then a coat over top while it's still wet. And this is my final coat that will actually seal this as one last coat. It can either be in your decoupage gel or it can be in your furniture sealer if you want to match the sheen on everything. So I have more spoilers though, because this piece isn't done with just the cow print on the front. By the way, I ordered the cutest knobs for this. They're not here yet, but I just ordered them. They'll be here today. They're little horseshoe shaped knobs. It's gonna be so cute. So I've got this barn wood look. And the other thing I wanna use on here is going to be this transfer. So this transfer is called Wild West Whispers and this all works together. I love how it works with the papers. So you've got the pastel artistry collection that all works together with the bumblebees and the florals. And over here, I've got the, um, the cowhide print. And let me show you the rest of this transfer. Sorry, I, I, I don't think I'm supposed to be showing this yet, but it was part of my project. Timing, I'm sorry, you guys. You'll see the rest of this collection very soon. There's more lives coming up after me. And if you guys stay on the Redesign with Prima page today, you will finish seeing these lives. So this is the Wild West Whispers transfer. Hmm. How do you get rid of the, fo uh, the folds in the paper when you take them out oh of the package? Oh my gosh, okay, there's a whole bunch <laughs> of different ways. You can. I usually use my heat gun. And that's because I have it all, always plugged in, always in my workspace, so it's the easiest thing. I don't have to wait for it to heat up. And if you just run it over, you could even use a, a, high, a, a blow dryer. Just a light heat setting over. Um, here, you wanna plug my, plug my um, heat gun in and I'll show you guys. Sorry for the noise. I have to find one. I've already, got, I've already gotten the wrinkles out of this one. You can see how this is totally flat. I don't have any wrinkles in this anymore. But let me show you how I got them out. <clears throat> Melissa came on and said that they've already shown that. Too. Oh, you already have. Okay. I felt I felt really bad like I was stealing someone else's thunder. Oh, I'm waiting for it to blow up on the comments. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was <laughs> yeah. just waiting. It wouldn't be the first time I, <laughs> I messed up like that. Okay. Whoopsie. So I just took this one out of the package. This is the pastel artistry paper. And I just took this one out of the package. And you can see it's got the folds in it all the wrinkles from the packaging. Straight out of the package, brand new. Okay, give okay. me a second, I gotta, I wanna get in so people can see this. Hold this up top so I don't have to hold it with my hand. A little bit of trickery. All right, so full wrinkles, and you can do this with a, an iron on a light setting. The only reason I don't use an iron regularly is because I have to wait for it to heat up and I'm impatient like that. Only request, can we not burn this piece? Yes, see this is what I want to um, really emphasize is I am using a heat gun. I'm going to use it on a low setting and do not hold it in place for too long because you can damage your paper. So I'm going to keep it moving. Same thing could apply if you were using a hair dryer. You can use a hair dryer for this, but I just run it over it. But they just, I mean, they just literally come right out with a little bit of heat.
So I'm following the lines of the creases. Watch how I'm moving my heat gun. I'm just going right on where the lines are. Yeah, here, let me point them out. Yeah, you can so see So you got where... this line here. Go can ahead. You, can you see over here? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, they literally come right out. It's that fast. Just a light pass with a low setting on a heat gun. Again, a hair dryer would work. Do not leave it in place, one place for too long. If you're if you're not seeing it release, then back up and start over again. If you leave it for too long, you will damage the paper. That's it. That's it. At every crease from this paper is now removed and it's perfectly flat. So you Thank you, Sharon, for the uh, the info. Because yeah, I do freak out a little bit when Brandy starts pulling this. Yeah, what my heat gun? No, the uh, showing of oh, yeah. things that yeah. maybe you shouldn't be showing. <laughs> well, it is release day. I figure. I know, well, you know what? I have seen it posted on the redesign page. I just thought I was stealing another artist's thunder. Like everybody is, you know, getting to show their collection. So now I've got a paper that's totally free of creases, and and that took me what ten seconds to do the whole paper. Now here's the unfortunate thing about this. I'm not using this paper, now so you I, gotta need, fold I need it to fold it back, back and put it back in the package. <laughs> so, and now I have no creases to follow. Oh, no. So I've got to this is a great idea. She needed to know that yesterday. Oh, it's super fast. And I Daylight always have my heat gun out. Take it inside and use your hair dryer and just run your hair dryer over it or the, um, or the iron on a low setting. Uh, a clothing steamer also will work on those. Okay. I've got someone coming on after me, so I have to watch my time. And what but time I, would that be? Um, um, on the hour. Okay. Okay, so this transfer, the pieces that I want out of here, I'm going to use these nail heads. Do you guys want to see one of these nail heads going on? I'm going to put it all the way along the sides of this, of this leg here. All my nail heads will run down it. So let's, it's got a million nail heads. I will, let's apply all of them. Is that really a million? I mean, factually, let's how many apply, are on? Let's apply all of them together. Let's, let's use, well, let's use I math. Well, what I would do... What I would do is I would think through this and I would measure, I would measure the distance between each nail head. You would not. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm going to on this. I legitimately have out my, um, my, uh, Oh, uh, this, you don't even know what that is. My, what's yeah. this thing called? <laughs> no, I really will. And I'm going to mark it out. That's why I have the pencil out because I'm going to mark out my spacing. So each one is say oh, probably yeah. an inch or, you know, two inches apart. I'll have to see what kind of spacing I like. Probably, probably an inch apart, inch and a half maybe. I don't know. We're just going to do the top one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm safe on camera. I will measure them out. So I'm going to cut myself a nail head so you guys can see. These Let's are... see. If I was doing it. Oh, so yeah, that's what I mean. I'll use that thing here. Do you know how to use that? Yeah. <laughs> like this, right? <laughs> Well, I will end up coming and I will measure out the distance between all of my nail heads. But I'm just going to apply this first one. And I think I want it to, let's see, I want it to go up above. Yeah, I'm going to put it up above this little, um, I have a break right here. And I'm just going to put it up in this top corner. But I just cut one out at a time. And I'm going to center this on my leg. Oh, this is getting good. Okay, so I rubbed over it, and then I can pull this backing sheet away. Let's see how authentic these look. I mean, you zoom into a pin dot. <laughs> yeah, basically. Jeez. Here, we'll put, and I'll put another one. Another corresponding one is going to go up on this side. These are very Western themed, very Texas themed. You might notice uh, the cowboy hats. I saw Janelle wearing hers. I tried to wear mine today. I, I have it out here for inspiration. Yeah, it so well. I'll use it in my staging. It's going to be really cute in my staging. And I kind of try to like tell a story with every furniture piece that I make. I try to imagine what would the story behind it be. Um, you know, I kind of make a theme out of it. So I've got this one running in line with this as a, a pull out here. So I've got that one running in line with my pull-out, so I'm going to do the same thing here and center it. I really need this drawer out. I'm not done with this desk. I still have a little bit of paint work to do on it. Now Sharon does have a point. Could you just cut the line off of them and um, just go? Well, I think they're, or are they too they're close really together? close together. 
they're really close together so you know i guess i could probably like skip every other one and and apply it you know if i just but have, i don't know if that's gonna go well. yeah but but my fear would be one would accidentally yeah. stick where i don't want it to stick yeah so i don't know because of the placement that i want i don't think i'm gonna apply them this close together you could you could if you wanted this spacing or i could i could just cut out every other one are you gonna put paper on the sides what are you gonna um, do no. on the sides? You guys wanna see what I'm gonna do on the sides? I'll show you guys right now. Let's put this drawer back in. So I'm gonna do the nail heads, which already look really cute. Even if I just did one little nail head, you know what these would be cute to cover is those wooden buttons that are always covering like screw holes and you could use these on the wooden buttons so it looks like nail heads. Oh yeah, the ones that are actually sticking out. Um, what I was saying to you um, before Sharon so rudely interrupted is I try to tell a story with every furniture piece. So where would this go? This would be, the the desk that would sit at the farm stand and their cash register would go on it where they keep all the records at the you know the, the local hardware store you know and i try to kind of buy into that theme all the way through from the creation of it into my staging same thing with the the little you know pastel artistry well it's, you know i pull the color inspiration from my from my transfer and they're very feminine soft pieces all the way through to my staging i would stage that with some soft florals so i'm going to cut out this um skull and these are going to go on the sides this transfer comes with two of them so it's perfect and these are going to go on the sides of my desk so I have a paint treatment on here that looks a little bit aged. And I think this is going to sit in the center like this. Not perfectly center. I'm going to kind of, you know, I can play with the placement if I wanted it a little bit up here. I'm going to, I'm going to probably put it somewhere in this arena right here. So once I have my placement decided, and peel off this backing sheet and I kind of aged this this is why I'll paint in ivory and earth and then I used a little bit of brown wax around the edges just to kind of make it look a little dirty and dusty and right and I'm going to hopefully find roughly my center point how about this since I already have out all these fancy tools here if I'm to measure the center of this, so I'm at, of course, 19 and a half. What's half of 19 and a half? <laughs> Nine and three quarters. All right, that'll at least give me a center point. Carry the two minus the one. Yeah, pretty much. Follow with a zero. Um, I art was my art was my straw. Although you know what's funny, I have a degree in finance. Yeah, that. you're good with numbers. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. Not right. so much fractions and decimals. So I'm going to kind of move this up a little bit. Um, have my center point in, and he's got some good center points on his skull. So I'm going to kind of line those up with a small mark that I made. And I'm going to end up covering that mark up. Not a little higher than center, though. Yeah, anyway. um, I just committed. You committed. Yeah. It's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> just eyeball it yeah pretty much i mean you're never gonna know if i put the one on the other side in a totally different place because you're never gonna see that side and this side on camera together at the same time right so i'm only gonna do the nail heads along the leg in the front you'll only see those on the front i might put some up a lot around the top you know if you don't get the horns on a perfect horizontal plane you can just say that it was a uh, inquisitive yeah. <laughs> hopefully they are horizontal it's always hard because I'm kind of off to the side when I'm on camera like this I'm not looking at it straight on so sometimes I watch it back and I'm like oh my gosh I didn't even notice that I always appreciate when you guys tell me stuff like oh uh, your drawers what were you thinking down. yeah <laughs> after I've applied it <laughs> yeah, I, I read the comments back and figure out <laughs> So how perfect is this transfer with that cowhide paper? I 
I thought about mixing and matching the patterns because that paper pack comes with three different paper designs that I could mix and match the patterns and put a different pattern over here, but I didn't want to make it too busy looking. So I actually like that this is a little more simple and I'll just have these on the side. Oh, you should move it. With my cow, oh, well, sorry. While I'm doing that. With my cow print on the front, with my nail heads, and this transfer actually has a few stars in it. And how I would use these stars is, I think I'm gonna put some in the corners up on the top of the desk. I'll just have some of these um, sort of rustic looking stars, and I think they're gonna go in the corners on the desk top, just so I've got some of those um, little hints of the design. So really fun, but still keeps it classy and sticks with the theme of the whole desk with this kind of rustic barn wood paint finish, the nail heads that'll run down. Um, I don't know, I even kind of just like them at the top at the top corners too. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you could get a, lo a lot of life out of this because there's just so simple. many nail heads on here and just keep it simple. It's really easy to go overboard too. So I try to, um, you know, I could put it at the corners too, like where every, I kind of like I that idea. Joint. Just at the joints would be cute. Just do a few of them. But if I was gonna go uh, come over to this side and put one up over here. So I will end up using all of the elements of this transfer. I can't put the other cow head on because I need to do another coat of paint on the other side of this desk. It only has a first coat. I needed to finish the paint treatment and I only got that done on one side of my desk. But now I can go ahead and finish this up and I need to paint underneath here too. But I'm going to have to lift this up onto its back so that I can, otherwise I end up sitting under a desk all day and it just, I don't know. I tried it and I kept hitting my head on here. What are you, Costanza? Yeah. So, so I'll just flip this onto its back and then I need to paint these three panels with that sort of aged white finish to match. But how cute is that? So I found a ton of inspiration in all these new collections, like all these different ideas that you can work with. Here's my best tip though. Do not let your decoupage gel dry inside your brush. It is a bear to get off. This stuff, put it in water. If you need to finish working on your project, at least put your brush in water and let it soak. All right, you guys. So that was the pastel artistry collection. I'll show you again. It's got the maxi transfer, which is two 12 by 12 sheets. Um, we've got the MIDI transfer, which is what we applied today. That's three sheets that are a little bit smaller. These are three eight and a half by 11s. Got the full size transfer from Pastel Artistry. That's two sheets that total 24 by 35. We've got the paper that I conveniently took out all the creases on for you guys. Just to refold. This is the paper with sort of an aged stone print. And then, of course, my bumblebee mold. I think I might add, I don't know, I might add like just one cute little bee on here. Not a whole lot, just one cute little bee pop popping out of the flowers would be really cute. Um, so that's the pastel artistry collection. And then we used uh, a little bit of this uh, Ranch Roamers is the paper. It's a three pack. And then the Wild West Whispers uh, transfer. We used on this is that rice here. paper or regular decoupage paper? It, it's the decoupage fiber paper from Redesign. So it's um, I'll, let me show you that. I'm going to show you the texture up close. I show you the different colors. Uh, you can kind of see not, the texture. Pull it back a little bit. Okay. It's got sort of a woven texture, so it's not a Try rice here. paper. Rice papers have a fiber in them that's from the rice hole. Back up a little bit. Okay. Um, this is more of a weave. So it, a, a lot of people okay. compare it to the weave of a of a dryer sheet. Of a dryer sheet it doesn't smell like a dryer sheet. <laughs> no, but it has almost the texture of a like a dryer sheet, that light woven texture. But when you use the decoupage gel with it, because it's that thicker formula, it kind of fills some of the weave on the texture. Um, it's not you won't get it as smooth as say a paint finish. It will always have like a light texture to it um, when you're done with it. But doing that light sanding and putting the clear coat over top um, can really help and take that down a little bit. So it's, it's, a, it's a woven sort of texture on these papers. Uh, this is the decoupage decor tissue fiber. It's a lot of words from Redesign with Prima is what these are. Um, 
All right, you guys, I am going to pop off because there are more lives coming after me and I don't want to step on anybody else's uh, space. So oh, you really? After you were so yeah. worried about releasing other stuff. Now, now is when I'm you're worried. Ask always for the last time <laughs> slot. The last, the I see. Last, now yeah, it's a worry. Where I can stay on for like four hours and I can show all the things without hesitation. Um, you guys, there's also some new uh, transfer designs from Kasha. There's some hardware, really cute hardware, sort of French provincial poles. Those are going to be really fun. Those are really cute. Um, I don't have a project for those just yet, but there's a whole bunch of new stuff. These are all available at your Redesign with Prima retailers. Um, thank you so much to Redesign for having me on today. I will get these projects finished up and there will be tutorials for these on my YouTube channel. Um, so check out Brush by Brandy on YouTube and you guys have a great day. I'll catch you later.